Since the days of the cavemen in scribbling on walls of handmade tools to the Victorian ages of kings, queens, and monarchs, today's social media age on phones and iPads, 
One constant has remained the same throughout all time. One thing has been the through line through it all. Humanity loves listing things. We love to rank. We are degenerates. We like ranking video games, past relationships, food, everything we want to rank from the best to the worst. And this, my friends, is why we are here for the first ever Valorant Power Ranking Show as we, every week, myself, Tyler Erzberger, Fiat on Fire, will be bringing my personal power rankings of Valorant from the various regions around the world to the table as I face off with a guest, an analyst, a player, to see who really is the superior ranker in the world of esports. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to rank some teams. And we could not start this amazing show, this amazing concept of ranking teams, because we do love listing, than the man himself from Canada, now in New York, Ardo Ocal, my colleague. How are you doing, buddy? Doing great. First of all, I love the fact that you're hosting a show no. that I'm also on. So I get to lay out for yeah. a while. This is amazing. I was wondering where you were going with that intro, though. I was like, <laughs> what, what was the constant Valorant? Like, like uh, shooting people in heaven is the constant of all of these things? No, the constant is ranking things. <laughs> Got, yeah, yeah. I From the start that. of time to the end of time, we love ranking things. Everything. I was like, <laughs> they didn't. They didn't have ops in the uh, in the Greek <laughs> in Greek yeah. times. Uh, Back in the Victorian ages, they do love those <laughs> omen smokes and teleports. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. But I'm let's to be get, here, dude. This is yeah. this is gonna be great. I'm pumped. But yeah, let's get down to business. We have uh, ten teams. We are starting with North America. Uh, we chose North America because we can discuss if North America is the strongest region, second round is the whatever you want to say. But it is the most. Backed region. The infrastructure is there. With the announcement today of Envy picking up we, uh, Together We Are Terrific, there is now nine professional teams in the North American space, the Tier 1, nine teams. So it just seems like we should start with North America. They've had some tournaments. We had the Ignition Series event, the T1 Showdown, two weeks ago. We had the Pulse, Inv Pulse Invitational this weekend that shook up some of the rankings I had my previous week. So... It's, it's going to be a fun one. It, there's there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of debate on where teams should go, but I think it'll be a fun one. I think that the three words that I would say regarding Team Envy's announcement mm. is it's about time mm. for the Envy side, for the Together We Are Terrific side. Finally, they have found a home, and it is long overdue, and I am sure that together Envy will remain terrific. That's that's why we pay you the big bucks, Arda. That's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> that line is beautiful. That line is beautiful. They should hire you. Envy should hire you to do their marketing. You... <laughs> Astro, I'm available. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. All right, all right. So everyone's here for the rankings. We gotta break it down. There's a lot of discussion. Who is number one? Who is the number one team in North America? Let's start at the top. I, I don't think there's much debate here. I'm confident in saying the number one team in North America right now when it comes to Valorant is three letters, T-S-M. Yes, 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 I know. T-S-M did lose this weekend at the Pulse Invitational. They also did lose in the group stages of the 100 uh, Thieves charity event. Even though that was myth, I don't count that term out. They were trolling. Drone was on Sova. The, the Cutler was playing Phoenix. But when I look at teams in North America, I think the one that is most put together, who knows their identity the best, is T-S-M. From Wardell's pop-off moments on the jet with the operator yelling profanities at, you know, 20 times a second, like the man just can't stop, to Drone being the best Phoenix, in my opinion, in the world, really the fire starter, the, the, the tempo maker of the team from top to bottom, just just an amazing team that, you know, they took the first major championship in North America in the T1X Nerd Street Gamer Showdown, winning that $25,000 prize. For me, TSM is my number one. Arda, please agree with me. I do agree with you 100%. Mm. I do want to say, uh, Vansilly in the chat is chirping us, saying, mm. wow, starting with number one spoilers? Excuse me, Vansilly, we don't tell you how to cast, okay? <laughs> Why don't you just simmer down, enjoy yourself, and watch the show? My Canadian friend, let's go Blue Jays. Let's also go TSM at number mm. one. I agree. I The reason, on top of everything that you said there, 
is the fact that, yes, we did have two tournaments this week, but they weren't A-tier tournaments. They weren't tippy-top tier tournaments that I would be concerned anything that I saw. Yes, they didn't have desirable results, but nothing that made me concerned that they were necessarily to be knocked off the perch. I do believe that they are on less confident footing than they were going into the week. I agree with that. They did lose to C9. That's a little bit of a concern going into the weekend in the Pulse Invitational. But I still believe that I have not seen enough, particularly from the rest of the field, especially because T T1 did not participate this weekend. And I think that is a huge reason why TSM remains number one, especially if T1 did have a better placement this weekend. Things might have been a little bit different. But for me... We still have a team here that has exhibited uh, uh, God-tier quality. Wardell still leads in KD after this week mm. with a 1.66 across all tournaments, across all competitors. And he still has the most total kills in NA professional play with 760. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Wardell yeah, is... baby, let's go. I mean, yeah, Wardell is the ace of the team, but... I'm actually, even though they didn't win this weekend, I actually did like the flexibility of the team. We saw Cutler play Rays. And if you watch TSM at the beginning or in the last, you know, month or so, it's been pretty standard where you would have Hayes and Cutler, the two veterans of the teams, the old the old men, as you would say in esports, both in their 30s, playing that Cypher and Sage Sentinel duo. You know, they're supposed to be like... They're the back line. They're in the back line. You, you don't expect them to get the, you know, the, the three-headed monster of Drone, Sub Rosa, and Wardell. They're the ones who are going to get the kills. But I do like that we're seeing Color playing more Omen, more Rays. It gives them more variance. And I like a team that can step outside the box and play more than just one set style. So TSM, they, as I, I do agree with you, Arter, that they're not they, – before this weekend, before this week, I would say they were the easily the top number one. There was no debate. I think there's a little bit of debate now. I, I still think they're very secure in their number one ranking. If they lose early in the Pax Arena tournament, if a few other teams that you know are closer than the rankings win, then we might see them drop from the perch. But I think right now, number one TSM. Yeah, if especially if they make it to the final of the Pax Arena tournament, unless they're playing T1 in the final and they lose, then I'm pretty confident in saying TSM remains here for the foreseeable future if that happens. The other thing I want to mention is Sabrosa's in the chat, and he made a very good point here. He says, winning a lot of events put a target on our head, mm. and a lot of teams put a lot of time to study us. Of course, when you're at the top of the mountain, everyone is preparing for you. So people are watching TSM. How do I get... How do I get around uh, Sabrosa and his clutch play? How do I get around Wardell and the op? Like they're prep, they're scrimming for this. They're practicing. They're game planning for specifically that. Should they face TSM because they're the best team out there right now? The bullseye. It's 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 no. It, the greatest championship to win is always the second one, right? We're both sports fans. We're ESPN. We're traditional sports network. <laughs> Winning the first one's easy. Winning the second one, that's the hard one. So mm -hmm. TSM going to Pax Arena, they have a giant red bullseye in the back, and every team that plays them is going to be gunning for them in that next edition series tournament. But going from number one, we have a number two. And a lot of people said this team was the number one before their first Ignition series event. Number two, for me, T1, the South Korean Giants, now the American slash South Korean Giants. The, I think the thing about T1 that a lot of people have been bringing up is, where are they? They don't compete in many tournaments, where TSM are those tournament grinders who are pretty much in every single tournament. You will see Wardell popping up everywhere. You can't go one step without seeing Wardell. Here's Wardell, there's Wardell, everywhere's Wardell. For T1, they've been laying back a lot. They've been observing the field. They didn't play in any of the tournaments this week. But I still feel like they've done enough, even in their small data pool, that I, would, I can say they're the second best team right now. Uh, Brack, from pound to pound mechanically, I still think they might be the best in NA. Scoodoodle, AZK, Crashies, who I believe is the best cipher in North America, if not the world currently. But the thing of T1 that I want to bring up that it's kind of keeping them from that TSM level is that, that leadership quality. The difference between if you look at TSM and T1 and you look at their comms and from the Twitch Rivals tournaments and the various tournaments they've had where we've had a little bit of a sneak peek into their communication is... TSM is a very internalized team. They're quiet. They're not yelling. They, they're, not, they're not super communicative. They're very, a lot of them are introverted. They're pretty quiet individuals, and that's not a bad thing, but they don't really have that one shot caller, where for TSM, Hayes is that shot caller. For C9, currently I believe it's Shinobi, and most teams do have that dedicated shot caller, that in-game leader. 
And T1 is trying AZK at that role, and they did make it to the T1 finals, but it didn't feel like the communication was perfect for T1. Uh, also, the flexibility for the team hasn't been the greatest. I, I As I said, how TSM has been mixing up their rosters, playing different agents, T1, mm -hmm. for the most part, outside of food, have been very stuck in one or two agents. What do you, what's your opinion on T1? Arda. Yeah, that's the, that's going to hurt them in the long run. I've noticed that as well, exactly what you said there. And versatility is going to be clutch, mm. especially as the meta, meta evolves, but also as we get more agents. Remember, we're getting six a year. So mm. I know it's not going to matter now, but it's going to matter in six months. It's going to matter in a year. And we're going to see that people are going to need to be nimble. They're going to need to be versatile if they want to survive because that's what we're going to see coming up in six months to a year is, is the influx of agents. And I will say this, I, the, the reason, I think it's pretty clear that the reason we have our one and two exactly how you initially had them in, in your inaugural rankings on our website is because, A, we, did, we haven't had a major tournament since the T1 Invitational, but also because... For me, them not compete, like for T1 not to compete and for TSM to have a bad week, I don't think it was enough to mm. knock them off the perch. The mm. next major tournament, yes. yes. And I think that both of the positions there, here's the other thing I will say. The less active they become, the more threatened, the more threatened their position becomes. Mm. So if T1 want to remain in the second position in the top three, etc., they'll be best suited to start competing in much more tournaments like the one they're going to compete at PAX Arena. Yeah, I think PAX Arena is a big one for them. Uh, I don't mind them going to the workshop, right, where it was, it was talked about when they lost to TSM resoundingly in the T1 showdown, their home tournament. They pretty much said, we're going to get to work. They've been scrimming, I believe, six, six games a day, six scrimmage blocks a day. So they're working on stuff. They're, they're in the lab, very similar to, you know, Sentinels, who kind of went and disappeared after their few first few you know losses in tournaments, kind of embarrassing themselves. So I'm I, I have a lot of hope for T1, and I want to see if Ska will play something other than Sage. He's been playing primarily Sage, only Sage in the first few tournaments he's been with T1, and we and he's the designated operator for the team. And we've been seeing that a lot of these designated operators throughout NA have been picking up Jet. Jet is now seen at, as seen as the number one operator agent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mame played it exclusively. We saw uh, Win on Gen G, who won the tournament, who was, you know, a very similar to Scott, playing a lot of that Sage, being in that back lane, that safe role. But he picked up the Jet this tournament, playing more aggressive a bit. So I want to see if Scott can open up his agent pool. We all know Scott is an amazing operator player. He is a one of the best snipers we will have in the game mechanically. But I want to see that more variation from T1 if I want to see them rise up the rankings. Agreed. So number three, I think the number three spot was in a debate coming into the weekend. Uh, I, I had Immortals number three in my previous rankings, but after the Pulse Invitational, I have to go with my French Canadian boys, Gen G Esports. It, it, it was a tough, it was a tough period the last month or so for Gen G. A lot of doubt, a lot of doubt from people. I put them number four in my initial rankings. And people were mad. I had some people say, why is Gen G number four? They haven't done anything since the closed beta. They haven't done anything since their first tournament, which they won in the T1 Invitational, where they got announced the day of and then destroyed everyone en route to winning a $20,000 grand prize. And I will agree, they looked pretty average in, in recent tournaments. They would beat the weaker teams and lose the stronger teams, kind of becoming the gatekeeper of the top five of North America. I believe Simo brought that up on the Pulse Invitational that they had kind of taken over that gatekeeper role. But this tournament, they looked a lot different. It was especially down to GMD, a uh, Gamond playing that Phoenix exclusively, where I think Drone was the only player playing Phoenix in NA for a while. But now it seems like a lot of entry players are picking up that Phoenix. And Gamond and Genji play Phoenix to perfection. They were hoarding ultimate orbs like like a, you know a cat lady, a seventy year old cat lady. They were no <laughs> one was allowed those orbs, and it seemed like every other round Gamond had a run it back, and Gamond made good on almost every single run it back he had, where he was running into spots, he was getting that scouting information, he was flashbanging in, and a lot of times he was getting that first blood that when you get that five e four and you open up the site and the other and you know the defense is rotating over, it, it's almost. It, it's a perfect situation for Genji, and they've been they 
they were a, a very calculated, more safe team before. And I think that Gamon picking up the Phoenix, you know, uh, win playing that jet, showing a little bit more aggressive tendencies on their side, really gave them the edge in the Pulse Invitational, winning the tournament and getting my number three spot. I agree. I had them at number three as well. I hope that we don't have the exact same list <laughs> because this will be a very boring show. But I'm pretty sure we don't. But I, our top three align, and Gen G mm. absolutely deserve to be number three. Uh, interesting stat about them. They've won the most prize money across the most events. Not in mm. total, but just spread out across mm. events. Just under 30 grand across seven events. So they have very consistent finishes. And they had a six-game win streak to end the Pulse Invitational, including beating C9 twice and Sentinels in that stretch. Very impressive tournament for them. And for me, the Pulse Invitational was more about increase. Like, if one and two were going to stay the same because they... I just didn't feel like the Pulse Invitational was good enough to knock them off the perch, mm -hmm. whether they didn't participate or had a bad showing. I think for the rest of the field, a good showing in a tournament like the Pulse Invitational will absolutely bolster their case to be uh, moved up the rankings. Genji is a perfect example of that. Now, in the broadcast, you will remember that they made a big deal about how Genji was awful on Ascent. They had a 17% win rate, etc., the thing is, they tried what TSM made popular in the T1 Invitational, the Sageless comp on mm -hmm. Ascent, and they absolutely dominated against C9. And they're still 2-5 and five on the map, mm -hmm. but they looked very good on Ascent uh, in that final against Cloud9. And I think that, I don't believe Effie's when he said in that post-game interview, uh, they don't really game plan, they just play their game. I don't believe it. I think they do game plan. I think they do strategize. And that was a very good move to try out there. I think he was posturing. I probably, I might be wrong, but it just sounds to me like, or looks to me anyway, like they have a great game plan. And that's exactly what they executed in that final in order to win the tournament. I agree. Uh, you know. The, I can't believe you're going against, against your Canadian brothers there. Your brethren there, are they? <laughs> Doubting your Canadian you're, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, is that let's just let's just put it out there. TSM multiple Canadians. Mm. Gen G team full of Canadians. Mm. Uh, Cloud Nine. Uh, many people say Tens is the best mechanical player out there. Canadian. Mm. If Valorant had a World <laughs> Cup today, guess which country's winning? Go ahead, Tyler. Sorry. Go ahead. Probably like Sweden. Probably. Maybe. 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 Yeah, probably Come Sweden. On. Yeah, and probably, no, no, probably not Canada. America, Canada would be up there. Canada, I mean, America versus America versus Canada would be up there. You got to be. You got. You are trolling me so hard right now. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to number four, <laughs> a team, a, a, a team that I think we might disagree on. This might be the spot we finally disagree on something. Number four for me is Immortals. They were my number three last week. Immortals is such a hard team to play. So they play such a puggy. Up and down style. And it, 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 some maps, they look like they're world beaters. Some maps, they look like they shouldn't even be in the playing field. And it really, for me, and it, it's, it's really come down to their ace player, their perceived ace player. That is Asuna, playing a lot of that raise. And Asuna, it, I don't want to say he's frustrating, but he is a player that when you watch him, you see moments and glimpses of a Wardell attends where he can take over a map in a, a snap. He is that good. And he's only 16. He turned 17 this month. So Immortals does have that player for the future. But there's also maps where you watch him. And there were some in the in the Pulse Invitational where he was going like 6 and 16. And the and the team wasn't functioning as they should. And a lot of, and Kohler is that backbone player for the team. And Kohler almost every game is putting up good numbers. But when, when Asuna is playing at his best with the backbone of Kohler, Immortals is a top three, you know, can contend with the T1s of the world. And they showed that in the T1 showdown where they nearly lost the T1, almost making the final. But for me, Immortals is number four. I think you can just, yeah, there's a lot of debate after the top three, I believe. You could pull a lot of teams up in four, five, six, and so on. But I still believe in the potential of Immortals. I think Thief coming in over JC Stoney. I like Thief's Cypher play on the weekend. I want to see more of him. But for, for me right now, it's a cautious number four, but I really do believe in Gangsta and Brior Lulu and Asuna. He has so much potential to be that breakout star right there of Tens, Wardell, Brax, and all of them. But it, it's, it's, it's going to take them time. He's 16. He has, he has time to grow. 
So this is where we differ. Uh, I do Ooh. have Immortals in my list, obviously, in the top 10. But my number four, believe it or not, and maybe this is contrary to exactly everything we said about the reasons why TSM and T1 are high on the list still despite disappointing or and uh, not uh, applicable results in the Pulse Invitational. My number four is actually Cloud9. Ooh. And here's why. Cloud9, to me, remind me of the 2006-2007 Cleveland Cavaliers, where you had one guy and <laughs> only one guy literally dragging everybody to a final. That's what the Pulse Invitational was for Latenz James. You like to call him Latenz James, and that's exactly what he is. He is still, by numbers among the best players in Valorant right now. He still has the highest average combat score of 313 across Jeez. 453 rounds. Can you believe that? And That's... he has the second highest KD behind Wardell at 1.51. Where it went wrong was the final. Gen G did an excellent job of shutting locked down, down Tem. They right? locked him down. They locked him down. 206 combat score in the final at the Pulse Invitational. And you said this in our Slack chat, and I agree. As 10s goes, so does Cloud9. You shut down 10s, mm. you shut down Cloud9. But with that said, the potential for me, if this is how scary Cloud9 look right now, getting these results, the way that they've been playing, beating, uh, having spectacular victories off the backs of performances from 10s, I will say that, and, and, and to be clear, I'm not saying taking anything away from his teammates, you know, Relics is doing a good job. Shinobi really stepped up in this tournament, even though he's not officially signed. We saw some play good play from Mitch. We don't know who the other players are, but if this is what we're seeing now, the potential is so high that you, to me, I absolutely put them, If with these kind of results, imagine how they would look as, an, as a well-oiled machine five stack. So for me, that is definitely a reason why I put them at number four. I'm not saying it's a, it's, they're on sturdy ground. Definitely a place that they could lose in any tournament. But right now, as I stand, based off of the results from Pulse and what I saw there, number four for me. Uh, no, I mean, again, as I said, I think from four on, it's it could be there's a there's a slew of teams you can put there. Uh, I do believe that Tens is kind of insanely aggressive style, similar to Sinatra and some other players in North America. It worked against TSM. His judge play on Jet, the Judge Jetty, as Simo dubbed him. Uh, was it was it was incredible the the aggressive overtone of his play on Haven and other maps where he was flying in with the judge, you know, took TSM off guard and he looked incredible. Genji, you know, getting a little bit of game tape, seeing maybe you know scouting that match, seeing what they did against TSM, you know, breaking down what what kind of positions they like to play, shut him down and locked him down. And as C9 goes, so does you know as tens go, so does C9. So I didn't have them as my number four or my number five. I had C9 and number six uh, up for number eight. They can't, they're up for number eight. I think six is a good spot. I'm not okay. sold on them. Immortals, very so, point. So, so you 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 rated the finals appearance a little yeah. bit less than me, yeah. I guess, is what it they've comes had, down to. They've had, okay. I mean, they're, they're, their, their ignition series tournament was so poor that I couldn't rank them higher. Like the biggest tournament so far, they didn't make it out of groups. So I really did hold that against them. If they okay. do well at PAX Arena, obviously they're going to go up. But I, I don't want. They're they're a fun team to watch. I love watching tens. Might be the best player in NA. But number six for me. Number five, we might agree on. I think we might agree on number five. Number five, not the number one team in NA, but I will rank them the number one team in the world when it comes to watchability. The most fun oh. team, the most exciting team to watch in Valorant right now today. No question. I already. I think you can agree on me with this. Burr, the most exciting. Burr, 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 burr. Let's go. Exciting. Odin Gober themselves, Sentinels, number five for me. It has to be. They're the most fun to team watch in Valorant. And, it, and it, I don't think there's another team close currently. They are so fun to watch that they are aggressive, ultra aggressive, hyper aggressive. It's like five tens is on one team. You have Sage and Cypher playing forward a lot of times. You have Sinatra, who is the most aggressive player in North America and probably the world, where he is running at full mock speed. At almost every turn, he is teleporting on bind instantly with the run it back. He is pushing the tempo over and over and over. And when he's not pushing the tempo, he's on that Sova. He's with the Odin, leaning back, making his Cypher and Sage entry for him. And he's going burr. It's, 
the team plays so weird and unorthodox and so funky where they still value breach very highly where you know almost no other team in and they you know really plays breach shazam still really likes the breach they play they have sick on the stage who's the battle stage where he is by far when it comes to stats the most deadly of sages where he is pushing the pressure a lot of times on Sage, where most of the time you want your Sage to hang back, because if Sage dies, the, so does the res, so does the heal go when the Sage goes down. But he's pushing the pressure. The team is so fun to watch. They have so many close games where it comes down to clutch. <laughs> they might be the best clutch team in the world when it comes to 1v3 situations. Zom, Sinatra, Shazam. Every player has had, had an amazing clutch in the Pulse Invitational, which is so fun to watch. If I was talking to someone, a new Valorant fan, and they asked me, what team should I watch to get into Valorant? Watch a Sentinels game, because it's almost always close, and there's always going to be something fun to watch. From from Sinatra revolutionizing the Odin, making going it from a meme gun to an actual gun that teams are... Like, Shinobi on C9 was using the Odin in the tournament, and they made the final. Like, like teams are watching what that the Sentinels are doing and, and, and copying them a bit because the Odin is very difficult to play against. It's the most annoying gun to play against in the game alongside the Operator. So for me, not number one yet because they haven't won a major tournament or even a B-tier mm-hmm. tournament, but I love watching the Sentinels. I love watching them. So this is where I start giving value to tournaments like the Pulse Invitational mm-hmm. and the 100 Thieves uh, Gamers for Equality event. I wouldn't necessarily put too much stock in B tier and below tournaments higher in the standings. But when you see Sentinels, no matter how the other teams were perceiving the tournament, maybe they were trying new things. Maybe they were just having fun. Maybe some were having internet connectivity issues. We saw that too, right? Oh, Hiko. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but when you have Sentinels take down a tournament, beating Gen G 13-4 on Haven, beating TSM 13-4 on Split. Yeah, maybe those teams weren't taking it as seriously and this wasn't as big a tournament, but this speaks more to Sentinels, in my opinion, than it does the other two teams. So that's why I wouldn't put Sentinels above either of those teams right now in this particular ranking, but I do put them at fifth because, uh, in part because of results like that. And yes, absolutely. Take any combat sport. Would you rather watch the super exciting fighter that, you know, win or lose, it's going to be a hell of an exciting fight? Or the boring fighter that will always win and it always goes to a decision and you're just kind of like, oh man, not this again. What would you rather spend $70 watching? Similarly, Sentinels is the team exactly. You want fu- you want excitement. You watch Sentinels uh, pr- uh, try to retake a site and like you're <laughs> at the edge of your seat, yeah. right? Like you're just like, man, no, this is not going to happen. Whoa, whoa, what's <laughs> going on? What? earth is happening right now like that's the kind of excitement that's going to create those pop-off plays that is going to be in every single marketing video for valorant in the future and the sentinels are going to create so many moments like that agreed they i mean we agreed on number five i i think sentinels is the team to watch going into the pax arena event they are on that cusp of that top three i think with gen g t1 and tsm they still need that you know big tournament win but win or lose even if they bomb out in the group stages you're gonna have fun watching them like, it, they are super fun. They they play the game in such a unorthodox, funky style that everyone should watch the Sentinels. If they're... I was going to say, if if Valorant had Fight of the Night or Match mm. of the Night oh, bonuses, yeah. Sentinels would take every single one. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they had so many great matches over the weekend in the Pulse Invitational and the charity event. So, in my top 10, breaking it down, we have number one TSM, number two T1, Number three, Gen G. Esports, number four, Immortals. Number five, Sentinels. And to round out my top ten, we have number six, Cloud9. Number seven, Together We Are Terrific, who are now picked up by Team Envy. Congratulations to them once again. Very well deserved. I am happy that those guys stuck together, got their team. They are now on a tier one organization, and I can only see great things for them going up. Number eight, Hundred Thieves. I want to see a bit more under thieves. I think they have the talent and the potential very similarly to Sentinels to bump up the rankings, but they need to perform more and play in more tournaments. And Hiko needs, you know, get his internet in, 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 in line. <laughs> like it, 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 if his internet's down, he, they're probably going to keep at number eight and go down even more. But hopefully by the Pax Arena in, uh, tournament, Hunter Thieves will have Hiko in a place where he can play the tournament at, at the best of his abilities. Number nine, I have Coach Seven who were impressive 
in the uh, Pulse Invitational, actually taking a match off of Immortals. They are right now, I would say, the best amateur team, Rob Wiz and company. Watch out for them if you're a, a Tier 1 or organization watching this. Code 7, they're going to be in the PAX uh, Arena uh, Ignition Series event, so watch for Code 7. And number 10, a little shout-out to Arda, way too French. Another French-Canadian team, the Doppelgangers Merci of Gen beaucoup. G. I know, so it's way too French, very, very on point as my number 10 team. So what's your top 10, Arda? So yeah, TSM, T1, 1, and 2, Gen G number 3, we both agree on that. Cloud9 and Immortals were actually switched for us, so you had them at number 4, I had them at number 6, Cloud9, the exact same thing. Sentinels round out my top 5. The reason I had Immortals at 6 was just because they are a team in the mix. Uh, they were third place in their own tournament. They had an unfortunate placement uh, in the Pulse Invitational. They lost mm. the Sentinels. Also, Code 7. That's, I think, where I really uh, put that stock mm. and the reason why I flipped Cloud9 and Immortals. But really, the case could be made for either, and that's why Code 7 rounds out my top 10. I have FaZe Clan still in my top mm. 10, and the reason is, like you said earlier about play, uh, giving placement or emphasis on the T1 Invitational, which really has been the biggest tournament in NA so far, FaZe Clan had a really, really good showing there they came in fourth and they only had two people signed and only one of them played at that time so much like cloud nine the argument that i made there about them being fourth i still think they deserve to be in the top 10 unless they prove otherwise if they miss a couple more tournaments then they fall out of the top 10 due to inactivity but so far so good from what we've seen from Corey and company and that might change moving forward we don't even know what the roster is yeah i i did not include phase into my rankings just overall just because the only signed player who played in that event was Corey, even though I believe some of those players will find themselves on the full-time roster of FaZe. He is still, you know, playing with a lot of those players in, you know, on stream and such, Marv, Zachary. But I, I want to see more events from them. I'm sure yes, if they agreed. do play more, they will be a top 10 team. They will be around, you know, the 100 Thieves, Envy, um, you know, line until they, you know, show some big results. But I, I think FaZe has a, has a bright future, but... Good top 10, aren't it? Good top 10. I wouldn't say as good as mine. I think mine was you know, slightly superior. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are, you, are you the judge, jury, and executioner no, of your own is. show, too? Tw oh, I is. thought you were. We're playing this Twitter. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If Twitter is deciding, then my number one is Faker, everybody. I make my, I'm make sorry, TSM is number two. Bump down, everybody, with respect to Code 7. Faker is my number one team, and only Faker. It's five Fakers, a clone oh. of Fakers. And they're all playing Viper. All of them Viper. <laughs> Oh, man. And they all alt. The entire map is just goo. It's just the jello. Oof. A whole map. They all alt at the same time. And they I win. Stupid. I win the and Twitter you would, pool. And you, and you would win because Twitter <laughs> is filled with a lot of degenerates. So congratulations, Twitter. <laughs> to round out our show each week, though, to, to kind of put a cap on the week that was in the Valorant ranking show, I have my player of the week. The honor of the player that stood out amongst all others in Valorant tournaments. And for this inaugural award, I could only give it to one man. And it's not, it's not from an A, which is actually surprising. For a show that was all about North America, my crown does not go to someone from North America. It actually goes over the pond to Europe, where in the Vitality Op European Open, the first serious uh, European Ignition Series event, G2 Esports, led by their ace player, Maybe the best jet in the world. I, I, I really wish we could have actual lands because I would love to see Tens, Wardell, Mame, you know, win, face this man. But sadly, global pandemic standing in the way. So right now, I mean, we can only theorize what would happen. But my player of the week goes to G2's ace, Mixedwell. Uh, not, not much to say. I mean, 9-2 record over the weekend. I think him and Artist both could have had a shout for the award. I gave it to Mixedwell. Uh, he had some really nice uh, closing moments in that series to kind of, you know, calm down his team, kind of when he was on the back foot, when it looked like Prodigy might, you know, sneak back into the series. Uh, Mixwell just put his foot on their throw and said, no, game's over, tournament's over, we're going to bed. It was a 2 a.m. tournament. Like, it didn't end until 2 a.m. in Europe, so congratulations to G2 for pulling it out. But Mixwell, 328 kills, 209 deaths, 64 assists in the tournament. 267 combat score and a, a .97 kills per round, almost a kill per round in the tournament. Just an astounding player. Uh, Carlos, who promised that this team would win a world championship, he must be very happy because this was a very good first step on G2's road to this potential world championship in the future. 
I uh, actually spoke with Mixwell after mm. he won the tournament. He was in the chat for the remainder of the Pulse Invitational watching the final transpire. And I asked him, hey, like, what are you noticing from NA play versus EU? And his response was, EU plays more tactical than NA and slower. NA plays are more direct yeah. and simple. Kind of makes sense. analysis, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it did show in the agent selection, right, where Phoenix is a heavy pick in North America, which is promoting a lot of aggressive play. You see Sinatra, you see uh, Gamond hitting that run it back, rushing in a lot of quick plays, kind of pushing the pace. But yes, I do think right now, I would agree that Europe is a little bit slower, a little bit more tactical, playing around those utility where NA, it is a lot of more fast break pace where you do see those rounds kind of ending in an instant when when you see Gamond or Sinatra's kind of take over a site, flashbang in, kill someone, and then the round seemingly over with them pushing in. But Mixwell, we will see. Like, hopefully yeah. in the future, we will see those NA versus EU clashes because G2 and, you know, Team Liquid now with... We've reported today, me and Jacob Wolf reporting that Fish123 plus Scream have joined the Team Liquid organization, that there's another, you know, beast to fight in Europe. And I cannot wait for the TLG2 smack talk that is to come in Europe. Can I also just last thing I want to say here is as much as I enjoy Team Prodigy mm -hmm. being involved in a lot of tournaments, I don't want those kind of teams to no. be in tournaments in, 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 in even a month from now. I'm happy they're involved. I'm not saying get out. What I'm saying is, I want G2. I want Team Liquid. Mm. I want teams like that. I want major orgs or even other orgs that are emerging, bringing professional mm. teams to bring us the best competition, not just, hey, sh sh let's showcase our talent so they get signed somewhere. I agree. I, uh, they're doing a great job. They are a talent agency. They are doing what they wanted to do. Scream and Mixwell were both on that Prodigy roster, that talent agency, to showcase their talents. And now both are the marquee ace players of two of the biggest esports organizations in the world. So Prodigy doing their job, but I do agree that we want fans to latch on to organizations that they can root for the long haul and, you know, entrust in those players. So that is what we have for our first week. Arda, thank you so much for coming on. This was really fun to do. Even Absolutely. though I beat you in my power rankings, Twitter, please vote for me. My power rankings were slightly better, but we'll see. We'll see. Twitter. Baker. You picked her. No, Baker. You picked Victor. If you want more news and highlights from the world of Valorant, please keep it posted at ESPN.com slash esports. We will be back here next Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And as we go, please know in the bottom of your hearts, while some people might put you as number five or number six chat, you will always be number one in my book. See you next week.